Welcome to Love Walk Christian Center, the church that walks in love. It is our privilege to have you join us for today's service. Let's worship the Lord. Let's just take a moment. Let's just begin to thank the Lord for all He's done for us. Just begin to think about all the things He's done for you and, and just begin to thank Him for a second. Oh, we thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praises, your breath in our lungs. So we pour out to you only you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that
creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry then from north to south and east to west we hear christ be magnified were the whole echoing his eminence his name would burst from sea and sky from rivers to the mountain tops we'd hear christ be magnified Singing, oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Singing, oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. finds its inmost melody and every human heart its native cry well then in one in rapture in my phrase we'll sing Christ be magnified strong and worship you and if it puts me in the fire then I rejoice cause you're there too yeah. I won't be formed by feelings I hold fast to what is true if the cross brings transformation then I'll be crucified with you cause death is just a doorway into resurrection life and if I join you in your suffering, then I join you when you rise. And when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing, my song will be the same. Singing, oh, Christ be in me singing oh Christ be magnified from the altar of my life Christ be magnified in me I won't bow 
And I won't bow to idols I'll stand strong and worship you And if it puts me in the fire Then I'll rejoice cause you're there too I won't be formed by feelings I hold fast to what is true If the cross brings transformation Then I'll be crude Sing that again, I won't bow And I won't bow to idols I'll stand strong and worship you And if it puts me in the fire Then I'll rejoice cause you're there too I won't be formed by feelings I hold fast to what is true If the cross brings transformation You can hang me there with you Cause death is just a doorway Into resurrection life And if I join you in your suffering Then I'll join you in your lives And when you return in glory With all the angels and the saints in me singing oh Christ be magnified from the altar of my life Christ be magnified in me oh be magnified Lord be glorified Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. worship you, Jesus. We love to worship you. Oh, how beautiful is the name of Jesus. How beautiful and how powerful is the name, just the name alone. Oh, we love to sing your name, Jesus. To sing your name, Jesus. <laughs> oh, we just love to look at you. Let our hearts turn to look at you, Jesus. Let it be our heart's number one thing to look at you. Just to look at you, Jesus. Just to say the name of Jesus changes an entire atmosphere. It changes our entire posture. Just the name alone. <laughs> it changes what stands in a room or what's even inside of it.
just a name, Jesus. Just a name, Jesus. Oh. Just the name Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You're welcome here, Jesus. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in our hearts. Light up every room. Tear the cobwebs away. Fill up the empty parts, Jesus. Fill up every single empty bucket inside of our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. We allow your movement to happen. We allow it, Jesus. We see you knocking and we're gonna open the door tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We answer the call, Lord. We answer the call, Jesus. We're going to set aside pride. <laughs> We're going to throw shame at your feet tonight. We're going to throw it all down, God.
you, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. You are holy, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you are Lord even over these services tonight. We thank you for your presence being here in the room with us. Thank you, Jesus, for coming and meeting with us. May your kingdom come and your will be done tonight, Lord. We are your people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Adrian. Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome everyone to Love Walk Christian Center, the church that walks in God's extravagant love. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday night. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose. You made a decision. You were decisive about what you were going to do tonight. You invested tonight to God and for yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's good to be home. It's good to see you. Uh, Pastor Phil and Pastor Dara, <laughs> hey, back there, send their love. Uh, we were in, in Big Sandy on Sunday ministering. We had a blessed time out there. Uh, we were blessed by Pastor Kevin and his congregation and, and Mama Jay. Uh, they took us out to eat on Sunday, and we had a great time. Um, with that being said, it's my privilege and an honor to receive tonight's offering and tithe, if you got it. Um, yeah, give a round of applause for tithe and offering. That's a blessing. That's a worship time, amen? Not for me. I'm not doing anything. It's a worship time. That's, that's worship. I want to read really quickly out of Revelations 12. NLT, I like King James, but I wanted to read out of the NLT. Of Revelations 12, verse 10. I'm going to start there. Um, some people have been going through some things. Right? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because you're going to start raising your feet too. Like, <laughs> things. Can we say things? Not things, but things. I got, right? But, I, yeah, stuff. But I want to remind you. Let's read verse 10 together. It says, then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens, and it has come to, it, excuse me, it has come at last, salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ, of, the, of his Christ, for the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before God day and night. Well, that's what you're going through. Notice it said going through. That's what you're going through. That's what you're per persevering past. There's a time for, for, for mourning, right? There's a time to mourn. That's not an abode. It's not where you hang out. It's not a place where you stay. You carry a tent when you go into mourning. You carry a tent because I'm camping. I'm about to leave. Not, a, not an extravagant tent, right? We're not, we're not glamping. We're not, you know, it's not a glamorous camping. We're, we're going through, right? And this is what I'll remind you right here. I want to remind you, verse 11 says, and they defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. We just sang a song. I really, 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 really like that song. It says, I won't bow to idols. 
I'll stand, I'll stand strong to work for what is true. And if the cross brings transformation, then you can hang me there too. You're tithing your offering. Don't be concerned. Don't be concerned. What are you speaking into it? What's your testimony about your tithe? What's your testimony about your offering? Because that should be a conversation that's being had by you and God and no one else. Let me let you know when you invite someone else into that conversation. When you're in the car, when you're in the car by yourself, and you say, this junky car. I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. It keeps breaking down. My, my ridiculous husband, my, my wife, my kids, I don't understand. They're just so dumb. You know who you invited into that conversation? It wasn't God. I was, at a, I, was, I was at a customer yesterday, and the guy started complaining to the guy who I was delivering tires to, and he went off on this tangent for about five minutes. It was so uncomfortable for me. And I just stood there and looked at the gentleman, and I stood there. I was talking to this guy, and the other guy came in, and I don't understand how come we do this. And then all the said, this ain't done, and that ain't done, and we're not doing this, and we're not doing that. And I was like, <laughs> I literally started doing this. I just started looking. Look at the airplane over there. Wow, that is a nice plane over there. There's some big old tires. Man, and the guy kept going for about five minutes. I wasn't supposed to be part of that conversation. When the guy walked away, he said, he goes, I got to deal with that for two more years. He retires in two more years. The enemy is not retiring. <laughs> he's not retired. He will be retired one day, but today's not that day. But you got to determine to yourself, I'm going to retire him now. You don't let him in your conversations. When you pray and you speak over your tithe and your offering, you need to give testimony of what it's going to accomplish. You need to give testimony of what it's done for you in the past. You need to give a testimony of what he's doing for you even now. But don't let the, don't let the enemy into that conversation that you have and oh, this, 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 this stupid job. This stupid neighbor, this stupid air conditioner, this whatever it is you're going through. And I emphasize going through. You overcome it by the blood of the Lamb, which is already shed for you and for me for victory, and now by your testimony. Yeah. It's time for us to start speaking into these things. Yeah. And don't speak the wrong thing. And guys, I understand it can be very easy. It's very easy just to start complaining. But in that complaint, you need to stop and catch yourself and say, God, I rebuke what I just said. And I speak life into this situation. I speak life into my tithe. I speak life into my offer. I speak life into my house. I speak life into my dishwasher. Whatever, whatever it is, I don't know what your situation is. It could be health. And for offering's sake, it could be your wealth, your job. And if, and if you're complaining about your job, didn't you pray for that one? I just want to remind you, didn't you, didn't you pray for that one? Then minister, minister, that's your assignment. Minister there and be a light and be a testimony even to your job. Because when, he, when that guy walked away, he said, that, that conversation should be held between he and I and not you. I said, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't invite it. I didn't want to be here for that conversation. I didn't want to be here. He said, I said, I'm going to get out of your hair so you can go do whatever it is he needs you to do, and I'm going to go ahead and leave now. He said, don't worry about it. I said, no, no, I'm not worried about it. This, this isn't my problem. <laughs> he said, I'm not involved. I'm just getting my pickup truck with the air conditioner, and I'm leaving, right? So you know what? When the problems and the trials come, because they're going to come, they're going to come. Say, God, this is not my problem. This is not my problem. I'm going to get in my air conditioner closet, and I'm going to speak life into it. I'm not going to wait for the accuser to come and accuse me anymore. I'm going to speak life into this. Amen? Would you stand with me tonight? You bless this, Pastor Liz. So, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, we give you honor, and we give you glory, God. We thank you, Lord, for your life, for your living water that pours into our life, Father God. And so we thank you, Father, for the blessing and the favor. We thank you, Lord, and we declare life over our finances. We declare life, Father God, over our health. We declare life into our work, Father, into our businesses, into our family, into our family members. I thank you, Lord, that we speak life over this life that you have given to us, Father. We will not take it for granted. We will be good stewards of what you have given us, Father. But we know that nothing here is ours. It is all yours, Father. And it is simply ours to steward it for your kingdom, for your glory. 
And so we thank you, Father, for this beautiful life that you've blessed us with. We thank you, Father, that our days ahead of us are good because you're already there. We speak life, Father, into our minds, into our hearts, and into those around us. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood, and thank you for your love. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for your peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your guidance. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you that you're always there to light up the path and to guide us to the right direction. You are a good father, and we love you. And together as one, we say, bless it, Lord, bless it, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. If you want to give online, you can go to lovewalkcc.org, click the Giving tab, then Partnership. It'll prompt you what to do next. If you want to give via text, you can text 281-916-5559. And may the Lord bless you as you give. Worship team, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for worshiping with us and leading us tonight. Uh, let me have the announcements. Do we have any first-time visitors? I'm looking around. I'm looking around. I need glasses, but I'm still looking around. No first-timers tonight? Amen. All right. Uh, everyone's, everyone's family. Good. Altar ministry helpers, we need them. Catchers, uh, what do you call that? Towel throwers? <laughs> Throw in the towel, Rocky. Throw the towel, Rock. Throw the towel. No, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> drapers. We need curtainers. Drapers. Catchers, we need them all. We need altar ministries. See Miss Danielle for information, but we need you. God needs you. What else we got? Children's ministry. We need, we need, we need people to help with the children's ministry. We need you to give them a, a, a goldfish. We need you to give them the word of God and then give them some goldfish and some juice. But more importantly, we need you to give them the word of God. That's important. Amen. See Pastor Lupe with that. What else do we have? In okay, I just my mind just went blank. Interpretation ministry, yes, that. Someone interpret the sign for me. Interpretation ministry, we need people who speak English and Spanish, and in the future, we need Portuguese, we need Russian, we need Korean, we need, we need it all. But right now, we need Spanish. We need interpreters. Please see Pastor Brenda for more details about that. Intercessory prayers, we need that. We're going to have intercessory prayer every Sunday morning at 8.30 and every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. And then we also have, what else we got? Outreach, see, see uh, uh, Brother Muscio for details on that. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer if you want to come. Sign up. He'll know and he'll contact you as to when they do it, how they do it, and when they're going to go. Amen? Amen. Brunch, Bible trivia, men versus women at Love Walk Christian Center, October 15th, 10 a.m. It's the Warriors of Wisdom. It's a 50 and up group. So if you're 50 and up and you want to duke it out about the Bible and what you know and don't know, oh, man, that's going to be fun. Look up Hezekiah 53.12. What? That on it? Anyways, get here for that. Well, that's going to be fun. I wish I could have a camera so I could watch that. Ladies retreat. Hey, ladies, where you at? I'm excited for you. I wish I could go because y'all have a blast, but y'all don't have the cookies. But anyways, y'all have a blast. I know you do, but we make sure when y'all are gone, the guys have cookies here. If you're a woman and you want to go, I think the ages, of, what's the ages on that again? I always forget. 16 or 15. 16 and up, right? Get here, bring your nieces, bring your granddaughters. You're going to want to go. It's going to bless you. You get away from your husband and his smelly socks or whatever he has, and you get a rest and be with other women that snore like you. That Y'all do. Don't act like you don't. I was, poor Pastor Phil, I was snoring this. Oh, y'all don't snore? Y'all breathe deep. In, inhale and exhale prof, profusely and profoundly. Okay. I got you. But it's November 10th through the 12th at Bethany Camp and Conference Center in Bethany, Louisiana. It's a beautiful place. It really is. You guys are going to enjoy it. They've never been there before, huh? No, this is the first year. You're going to go. It's really nice. I promise you, you're going to like it. So get there. See uh, uh, Pastor Lupe for details on about that. Uh, Pastor Philip and Pastor Taylor, Romans 15th anniversary. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, you got to give that a round of applause. That is, a, that is a rarity today, but we'll be doing something November 13th. Uh, there will be some more exciting announcements to come, and you don't want to miss it. Don't miss it. Get here. Spoiler alert. Listen, October is Pastor Appreciation Month, so if you want to bless me specifically, you know what I'm saying? I'm right here. Don't, don't wait. Oh, is that, is that wrong? Is that frowned upon? I'm sorry. No, seriously, it's Pastor Appreciation Month. We have a lot of pastors here because we, we're, we're, this church has a foundation and we're preparing for the big. 
We're ready for the big. So we got children's pastors. We got a youth pastor. We got a, a, a senior associate pastor. We got an executive pastor. We got senior senior pastors, and uh, we got elders. We bless your pastors. Let them know how much you love them, how much they, you appreciate them. Listen, we have children's pastors that are in charge of the children's ministry, and we don't have thirty minute Sunday services, right? And so there's people back there that coordinate people to help watch over your babies. I'd be appreciative. I know on Wednesday nights when we were tired, like, you go over there. You, know, you, you go. You, mm, mm, right? Let them know how much you love them. Let them know how you appreciate them. Bless them, amen. Get them a card. Get something, anything. Just Here's a pin. I love you. Right? Anything. Let's bless, bless them. And so, yes, October and November. Also, uh, Ukraine relief. We're not stopping doing that. I got one more announcement. Um, if you want to give to Ukraine the Text 281-916-5559, put UK in the amount. Um, I got this. This is, I've been needing to do this for about a month and a half. It's the media outreach. It is, Pastor, been a month and a half. I keep postponing it. Uh, but this is for September, so yeah, that lets you know right there. Um, <clears throat> look, we're reaching people, and this is so you know. We're reaching people. Facebook, viewers reached 1,961 that's more than this than in this room. Page visit, visits, 479. Post reach, that's 5,700. Up since the last 90 days by 7.4%. 7 Post engagement, that means reactions and comments and shares, is 3,600 total from the last 90 days versus the prior 90 days. So it's even up that much. Uh, Twitter, we need more followers on Twitter. Why are we doing this? So we can expand the gospel. Amen. YouTube, 92 subscribers, up, up, from, uh, up three from last month. I encourage people to subscribe. We've had 188 views, and this is the one, this is the one I want to hit right here. We've had 5,900 impressions. Number of times videos and thumbnails were shown to viewers. So as it comes up on your screen, it's coming up 9,000, or excuse me, 5,900 times. It's a 2% of viewers have clicked on the impression that's 118 viewers clicked on our services. 16% of those viewers were from Russia. So we're reaching Russia. 34, this is the other one I like. 34.4% of these viewers were not our subscribers to the YouTube channel. So that means 34.4% 34, 34 of these people have never seen Love Walk, don't come here. They just came across it and they watched the video. So guys, we're reaching, we're extending out. These cameras are not for not. These lights are, are not just so we can look good. You can see the shine on my head. Um, I insist we need a disco ball for that. But no, we are reaching the community. We're, we're reaching even greater than the community. We're reaching the world. Amen? Amen. So without further ado, would you please stand with me, Pastor Brenda? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have the amazing privilege tonight of introducing to some of you and presenting to others of you a young woman who is on fire for God. As I prayed into this week, uh, as pastors were going to be out, her face continually came before me in prayer, which means that, which as, and as I talked to God about it, he said that she has a word in her for you tonight. So if you will just sit on the, get on the edge of your seat and see what God has for you, Danielle, would you come up? This is an amazing woman of God. Let me pray over you. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just lift this woman of God up to you. And God, I thank you that this message you knit, knit inside of her as you knit her in her mother's womb. And I thank you tonight, Lord God, for this voice, this voice that you have brought to us to bring your word. Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for it. And God, I thank you, Lord God, for the changed lives as the wind of your voice flows through her body. So Father, I thank you that she sinks into you tonight. And as she sinks into you, God, God, that your spirit flows in this place like it never has before. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Give them heaven, girl. Okay. Hello, testing. Here we go. <laughs> Um, it's an honor to be here with you guys and just to talk about the word. But before we begin, I need to be obedient. 
So let's just take a few moments and pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Oh, we welcome you, Lord, for your glory. We just thank you, Father God. I decrease that you increase. It's all of me and none of it's it's all of you and none of me. You are worthy, Father, and we just thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. You're worthy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Okay. So what Holy Spirit told me to talk about tonight is that when I was praying for the, the flow of this service, the Lord was saying, so many of my people, they don't love me. They don't cherish me. They don't take the time to get to know me. And if you would just only know what is in you, because I'm in you, but I'm also wanting to be a part of you. I want to be a part of your daily lives. And what he told me this spring tonight is to talk about something that's called an overlooked power. So you guys can be seated. And let's go to John chapter 1. And we're going to come out of the Amplified Classic. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to start at verse 14. John 1, starting at verse 14. And it says, And the word Christ became flesh, human incarnate, and tabernacled, fixed his tent of flesh, lived a while among us, and we actually saw his glory, his honor, and his majesty, such glory as an only begotten son. This scripture is so powerful because it talks about Jesus coming and he became flesh when he walked the earth. And I want y'all to picture this. When Jesus walked the earth, he was the word. It says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. He was the word, he was Christ. However, when he walked the earth, he was power. Whoever needed power, they had to go to him. They had to go to Jesus to get that. And if we look at any person like in the Bible that needed power, when they initiated it, they got it. I mean, if we look at some examples, there's a Syrophoenician, which I love this story. It's so good because the Syrophoenician, it wasn't even her time. And Jesus told her that. She was like, you know, it's, Lord, help me. My daughter is demon-possessed. And Jesus said, you know, no, it's not your time. I'm here for the children of Israel. I'm here for the Jews. But because of her faith, she was persistent. She was like, the devil is in my daughter. Lord, help me. And even though she still was saying words that were not, you know, her words because she was Syrophoenician. But the moment she truly became honest with him and she initiated it and said, Lord, help me. From that moment, Jesus said, the devil's going out your daughter. You can go. And so if we look at that, if we look at the woman with the issue of blood, the demoniac, all these people, they initiated power from Jesus. They went to him and they got it. And I want to ask you, when's the last time that you tried to initiate power from the word of God? I mean, really, when's the last time you took the time to say, I'm going to take this Bible and I'm going to get what I need from it instead of looking at trying to go get it from somebody else. Looking at going to, well, when I get to church, I'm going to let pastor pray for me and then it's going to work. But what about you? 
why can't you do that? You know, our pastors have been talking about being a good steward, being an ambassador. The first step of being an ambassador is you have to know your covenant. You have to know what the Constitution says. Like, if there's an ambassador that's in another part of the world, an ambassador for the United States, and they're in Russia, if they're in China, you cannot tell them anything that the Constitution doesn't say. They know it like the back of their hand. But I want to ask you, do you know this word like the back of your hand? Do you know your covenant rights? Do you know what belongs to you? Or is it something that you're just, you know, well, I'll just read it, you know, when I get time. Or I'll just, you know, look at it when it's a good time convenient for me. And I get it. We are all busy. We all work. You know, raise your hand in here if you work full time. Yes. Some people, two hands if you're a mother, too, or a parent. <laughs> it's a lot. But the enemy will try to use anything and everything to distract you from where there's power. There's power in this word. There's power if you need it, but you have to initiate it because God is not going to do it for you. Now, let's go to Hebrews 4.12. And we're going to start off with this one in the Amplified Classic as well. Thank you, Vanessa. Vanessa's doing such a good job, y'all. Let's just give her. <laughs> okay. And it says, for the word that God speaks is alive. It's full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line, the breath of life, soul, and the soul plus the immortal, the spirit and the joints of the marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and shifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of our heart. That's a lot, but that's powerful. That's what this word does when you actually go to it and read it and take time to see what's in it. Now, if we could see the same one in the message, this one is my favorite. It says, God means what he says, what he says goes. His powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, cutting through everything, whether doubt or defense, laying us open to listen and obey. Nothing and no one can resist God's word. We can't get away from it, no matter what. Now, come on, y'all. <laughs> If that don't, like, stir you up to make you want to start reading the Bible more, then we need to lay hands on you after the service, because I'm wrong. But <laughs> I'm even bold enough to say in that scripture where he said it's sharper than a, a surgeon's scalpel, which means to me, the way I interpret that is, if I really dig into this word, I should trust this word more than trusting going, letting a doctor cut on me. I'm not saying, and please understand, <laughs> I'm not saying that's bad if you have to do that because there is mighty men like of the past, present, that have gone and had surgery because the Lord led them to. It's fine. But in today's time, there's so many Christians that I talk to that they'll rather go trust a doctor's word before they trust this word. And there's something wrong with that. You know, we live, we are blessed to be in a faith church where we're taught faith, we are taught how to live and walk by faith, but why don't we do it? What is, what is the hindrance of us taking this word and just chewing it and making sure that we go here if we have a need? We go here if there's something that's bothering us. Instead of us going and calling our friends, instead of us going and calling somebody else to talk about it, why don't we go to Jesus? Those people in the Old Testament they had to wait for power to come upon them. You know, people like Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, you know, Enoch, different people God chose, Abraham, Noah, for his power to come upon them, and then they were the voice of that time. But we are blessed to where we can hear the voice whenever we want. We can hear Jesus. All we got to do is go to his word, go to where power is. But why are we seeking power? And I want y'all to really think about that as I'm talking. Like, what are the things, the distractions, the hindrances that the enemy has thrown at you to stop you from going to this word? Because we're going to expose it tonight, and that way you don't have to deal with that. Because there's no reason why we as believers 
we should be battling and doing and dealing with the same thing sinners deal with. You know, we're redeemed from the curse, according to Galatians 3.13, but why is it some of us, we walk like we under the curse? I mean, when people see us, would they want to serve God after looking at your life? I mean, would they want to? Are you showing a good example of the image of Jesus? Are you showing them a broke version of Jesus? Are you showing them a distraught version, a, a version where they don't know who they're going to get at work? <laughs> because you one moment here, one moment there, one moment, oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, we're going to pray the next moment. You rolling your eyes, almost probably cursing them out under your breath. That's not, you know, that's not showing people the love of God. That's not showing people who he called us to be. And so we're going to attack that tonight. Now, one of the things that I love about this scripture, too, is that it talks about the importance of what the word of God does. And if we go to Psalms 119, 105, it says that the word of God, he does, he's a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. So the word of God gives us direction. So if I need to know what to do, if I need to know where to go, instead of me going and talking to some people, going to talk, you know, to my best friend, girl, what are you doing? You know, I don't know what to do with my life. I go to this word. You know, this word can give you direction for your life. It can create. It can, you know, it can give you wisdom. Proverbs is full of wisdom and shows us how to live and conduct our lives so we can make the decisions. Now, this book can't tell you what street to buy your house on. It can't tell you who to marry, but it can lead you in the right directions to make sure that you're following God's plan for your life. But are you really doing it? Are you looking at it like that? Or are you looking at it as something that, oh, I just did my chore? Or, you know, let me read the word and, you know, so I can mark that off for today so I can be a good Christian. Because I'm going to be honest with y'all, when I, growing up, when I was in church, you know, they taught us, like, oh, if you listen, if you obey the commandments, then God will bless you. You know, God will bless you if you do this. But it wasn't until I left home and I started getting a revelation because it gave me a picture of God is sitting on the throne and he's choosing who he wants to bless. You know, because, oh, if he hasn't blessed you, then you just got to wait your chance. You got to wait your time. But... If you just keep doing good, if you just keep obeying the commandments and acting like a good Christian, then you'll eventually get it. But that's not the way God works. Anything that you want, God has already done, but we have to initiate it. We have to go to him and say, okay, God, this is what I need. Because the Bible says in John, whatever you ask for in his name is done. You know, all you have to do is ask. And the moment you ask, that's when you release your faith. And you say, God, I take this. It's mine. If you need healing, Lord, I thank you that I am the healed. I am healed now. Healing water flows through my body now. The blood of Jesus permeates through my bloodstream. I shall live and not die to declare the words of the Lord. And you might feel a symptom. You might feel something. You might see something. But that doesn't mean that the word didn't work. The moment you released your faith, it started working. If we go to Proverbs, no, let's go to Mark. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mark chapter 4, starting at verse 23. And we're going to read this from the Amplified Classic. And it says, If any man has ear to hear, let him hear, be listening, and let him perceive and comprehend. So on this verse, it says, if any man has ears to hear, let him hear. We know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We all know that. But I want to ask you, what have you been listening to? Who have you been letting get to your ear? You know, because that person can either sway you towards good or they can sway you towards bad. They can sway you towards doubt and unbelief or they can stir you up in faith and get you to where, okay, I got this. I take this as mine. You know, one of the things that me and my friends, we like to talk about is when we hear people, can we locate their faith? Can I hear faith coming from them? Or do I hear tradition? Do I hear religion? Do I hear, you know, just nonsense? Somebody that, you know, you're confused, like you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we have to look at. You know, and the thing I like about this verse is it says that 
it's not on God to determine how much we hear. It's on us. It says, if any man has ears to hear, let him be listening. That means that it's up to me. I decide how often I'm going to go in this Bible, I'm going to read it, how often I'm going to take time to just get revelation from it, or I'm going to just, oh, well, I don't have time for that today. And every time you say you don't have time for it, it's basically like you're telling God you don't have time for power. You don't have time to get to know him. You don't have time to see how I can get revelation, how I can manifest the kingdom. I don't have time for it. So is that what you've been saying? I mean, really, let's sit and think about that because none of us are perfect. We all are working towards being the image that God created us to be. We're all working towards running our race and fulfilling our purpose. But how many times do we sit there and we know we should go read our word. We know we, sh we should go and pray and get in the presence. But we're like, no, I, I ain't trying to do that, God. I'm trying to watch this show. Or no, I want to go do this. I want to go play basketball. Or no, the game's just football season just started. God, I can't miss this game. But it says here, we're the ones that determine how much we hear, what we hear. And by us hearing, it determines how much power. So do you really want power in your life? Or you're just saying it because it sounds good. You know, just to share with y'all, when God was telling me about this, and he was really putting in me what to talk about for this service, one of the things he brought me back to is maybe like a few months ago when I was praying, he told me that, you know, when you read the word, you read it with excitement but you don't take time to just really hear me. And sometimes because you don't want to know what I want to hear, what I'm trying to say. And, but I want to know how many other people are like that. You know, this is something he told me because I have no problem. I like reading the Bible. But he was really trying to tell me, do you really love it? Do you really love it to the point to where if this is all you had, would this be enough? Would this be enough for you? If... And, and really, he was just asking me the question, am I enough for you? And I want to ask y'all that. Is Jesus truly enough? Is this word truly enough for you? Because I know for me, it really took me back. I said, well, God, am I, am I taking you for granted? I don't want to do that. My heart is not to take you for granted, but to show you how much I love you, how much I need you. And it sounds good. We say those things. But actions speak louder than words. Do we really mean we love him? Because if not, if, we, if he truly was our first choice, if he truly was the one that our soul longs for, why is it so hard for us to get in our word? Why is it so hard for us to take time and get in his presence? But we treat it like, oh, it's something I got to do. Or we don't do it until we're in a crisis mode and we need something, one of our family members need healing, we need healing, we need a financial breakthrough. Oh, let me go find that scripture. Oh, yes, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and has no sorrow when we're trying to shun da 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 by it and trying to do tongues when all along, if you would have been feeding on the word, you wouldn't have to act like this. You wouldn't have to act like somebody that's, like how my grandmother would say, a chicken with their head cut off. <laughs> you wouldn't have to do that. And Again, it's this message, God just wanted us to, to challenge us. You know, are we really doing what we need to do? Because this is the last days. You know, we hear that so much, like, it's the last days. I know I have said it once before. I've been hearing that since I was, I think, two or three. You know, it's the last days, and I would look at my grandmother crazy, like, you been saying, for you, it might be the last days, but not for me. And so, <laughs> I'm just, okay, you, you say that every, you know, day. It's the last days. Get, it, and I'm serious, y'all. Let me make y'all laugh. <laughs> when I was younger, my grandmother used to have, like, Bible studies at the house and stuff. And they was anointed. They really were. And my sister can attest to this. <laughs> but it would be so funny because at some moment, she would, like, just, you know, tell us, the grandkids, especially, like, my older cousins because, you know, they was wilding out and stuff. She, and so she'd be like, y'all, it's the last days. Get your life right. Y'all need to get your life right. And, you know, when you hear that so much, 
you know, sometimes it gets to the point where I've heard that it just goes in one ear out the other. You know, that's all we've been hearing, that's all we didn't grew up on. But the thing is, we're living in a time now, you know, it is the last days. You know, when I read the gospel, the thing that just amazes me is how they all knew it was the time of the Messiah, but they didn't take time to truly see the Messiah. You know, that, <laughs> it really baffles me every time I read the word, and especially when I'm reading the gospels, it's like, they was right there. They sensed it. They knew it was the time of the Messiah, but they couldn't see the Messiah right there before them. They were trying to come at him. They were trying to kill him. They were trying to talk about him. But we're so quick to look at them and judge the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but how many of us are the same way? You know, we have Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. We have Jesus dwelling in us, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But how many of us, we sense something's going on, but we don't take time to listen. We don't take time to get in our word and really see what season we're in. We're just like, oh, well, pastor tell us. He a prophet. He going to prophesy it. Like, no, mm -mm. we need to get in the word and we need to know. Or if we don't, we're just as bad as them. We're just as bad as those Sadducees and Pharisees that had Jesus walking among them, but they didn't know the times and seasons. And so it's time for us, this church, we won't have no excuses. We can't be ignorant. We cannot be ignorant to the truth because the truth is right here. The truth is being preached every day. The truth is here every Sunday and Wednesday. We have pastors that love us, that feed us. So you have no excuse not to know. But why is it so many people act like they don't? Why is it so many just don't, you know, oh, for real, that's happening? Oh, for real, we can do this? Oh, you mean I can pray for this myself and actually see something? Yeah, you can. You don't have to always wait for somebody else to do it. And I don't mean to sound hard, y'all. I'm just giving this the way the Lord told me. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Next, I want to go to Romans 10, 17. And we all know this scripture. It's a, you know, it's a familiar one. It says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But in the Amplified Classic, it says, so faith comes by hearing what is told. And what is heard comes by the preaching of the message that came from the lips of Christ, the Messiah himself. This is powerful because when I was growing up at first, I would always think that the only way faith could come is through my pastor or through, you know, somebody that was teaching. But every time I go to this word, I'm hearing faith. I'm speaking it. Every time I go and I look and I go to Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans and the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, plans of good and not evil. I'm hearing the word. I'm saying the word, which is causing the word to work. But if you don't do that, if you don't take time to go to the word and hear the word for yourself, how can you expect faith come? You know, we all know that God has given us all the measure of faith, but it's up to us to develop and mature that faith. Because how are you ever going to believe and obtain something if your faith is still at the same level that it was the day you said yes to Jesus? You know, Pastor Ezra brought up something good Sunday. He talked about people that, you know, have been saved for years, but they're just doing these lateral moves, step to step. You know, they're not moving anywhere. And, and he, used the, he used the analogy of a pool. And I think he was talking about me because <laughs> I'm one of those people who, I'm not an experienced swimmer, so if I go in, I'm going to be holding on. As long as it's five feet, I'm good. But if it's deeper than that, oh, no, I'm holding on to this because I'm not drowning. I'm not going to heaven like that. <laughs> no. But, you know, as long as we move inside to side, we're good. But if you want me to go into the deep, uh, no thank you. But how many of us, we don't take time to go to the word so we can go deeper in him? You know, that's how we develop our faith and mature it, by going in the word, digging in it, and seeing what the word says. You know, the, the Bible is clear. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But what word are you hearing? Are you taking time to hear what your friends say, what your family members say, or are you going and, taking a, and, and closing your ear to hear what God says? And I mean, I just want you all to think about that. You know, when, such, when situations arise, who do you go to first? Do you go to your friends or do you go to Jesus? 
or do you go, or do you not go to any of them? You just, so I'm gonna figure it out. We all have Jesus available to us. This word, this word gives us access to that same power that Jesus had when he walked this earth. Anytime somebody initiated something from him, they got it. They got it because they wanted it. But do you want power? Do you want him moving and breathing through you like that? Or you just say you don't have time. You know, Proverbs 4.20, it says, My son, attend to my words. Let your ear not decline from my heart. Let your ear not decline from my saying, and let them not depart from your eyes. The way I interpret that is just, I got to keep this Bible in, like, every day. I got to read this. It should, there's a scripture that says it should be like a mirror. When I read this, whether I'm reading in the New Testament, and it's talking about John the Baptist, or whether it's talking about, I'm reading about the disciple that Jesus loved. You know, John had a revelation of who Jesus was, but do you? Do we have a revelation of how much God loves us? Or is this just something that, you know, I'm going to just look at when I get time. This is something to help us. You know, when we pray prayers that we want the kingdom, I have the kingdom on the inside of me, but are you doing what it takes to manifest the kingdom? Are you doing what it takes to where you have prosperity? Are you doing what it takes to where you have wisdom, you have an abundance of the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of you where it bubbles up to where you can be led? Or are you just, you know, I'm not going to, I don't have time for that. I'd rather just go and, you know, watch TV. I'd rather just go and watch my favorite show cause my, because a new season just started. But that show is not going to help you when your child is sick. That show is not going to help you when you need healing or Let's just say you go to the doctor and get a report, and the doctor say you have 10, you know, 10 months to live. Then what you going to do? That show is not going to help you. But what will help you is this word, because this word is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, than any scalpel. It's sharper and it's more powerful than any medication that you can take. It's sharper than anything. But do you believe that? Do you, really, do you really know that? More importantly, do you know how important Jesus' blood is? You know, the blood of Jesus is powerful. You know, pastor's been talking about communion, and he's been talking about the anointing behind it. You know, if you truly get a revelation of communion and how amazing it is that we take that body, when we, that cracker represents his body, and it was broken for us, you know, and His bones weren't broken, but we break it. And then, you know, the juice is the blood. That blood, every time I take it, that's the same blood that runs through my DNA that Jesus had. You know, I want to say it's 2 Peter 2.24, Amplified Classic, where it says, the blood of Jesus permeates through my bloodstream. Do you, so you can't just say that one time and then expect it to work. No, this has to be something that you live in. Like, I am healed. The blood of Jesus permeates through my bloodstream. I shall live and not die. But this is something you have to practice because if next week you get a report, but you haven't been seeking power from this word, then how are you going to expect it to work? Because we don't serve a genie. We don't serve a sugar daddy when we could just go to him whenever we want. Or we don't... This isn't somebody that we can just, when I want something, I'm going to come to you or, you know, manipulate. Well, let me go pray for an hour. Let me go fast, and then God will bless me. No, this is something that we practice. We live it. This is who we are. This is who God called us to be. We are word and spirit beings. There's no reason why we shouldn't have power flowing through us. We shouldn't have Holy Spirit working through us to where whenever we need power, we can get it. Whenever we see somebody that needs hands laid on them, we can do it. We're not running away from it like, oh, well, I'll let somebody else do that. No, this is something we should be doing. But why is it that we don't? Why is it that when we see somebody that needs prayer, we want to go the other way or come on, let's, 
why don't you come to church and I'm going to let my pastor pray for you. You know, he could do it. But you can do it. God, the same power that dwells in our pastors dwells in us. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us and quickens our mortal body. I love that scripture because it talks about quicken. And when I think of quicken, I think of somebody that got up, you know, quickly, like Lazarus. The moment Jesus said, come, he came. But how many of us, our spirit men are quickened like that? Where the moment we need to do something, the moment God tells us to do something, to go pray for somebody at a gas station, oh, well, let me, do I really have to do that, Lord? Do I really have to go there? But if you was getting power from his word, all and feeding on his word, you wouldn't have to worry about it. You would already know it's done. You know, Jesus lived in such intimacy with the Father when he was on this earth. He truly left us a great example of what it is like to imitate him. He always was in his Father's face. He didn't do nothing without the Father. He prayed. He would get up. He would have to maneuver, when you read it, to get away from the disciples just so he could be alone with his Father. But I want to ask you, how many of you do that? How many of you is such intense, like, man, I got to get home so I can spend time with Jesus. Man, I got to see what he's saying today. It's, it's, oh, my goodness. Lord, okay, what you got for me today? Or is it just something we do on a pass by? I mean, let's pause and think on that, me included. I mean, is it something that we really take time and see that it's really something I need in my life? Do I really believe that this word can change my life? Or is it just something that I look at as a history book? Something that, oh, man, that was cool that happened. Oh, yeah, Samson and Delilah, okay. But do I really believe what's in this book? That's the thing. Do you believe what's in this word? Because if you did, would you treat it differently? Would you look at it differently? Now, let's go back to Mark chapter 4, verse 24. And that's going to be Amplified Classic, Vanessa. And it says here, and he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hears. So did y'all see that? It says, the measure of thought and study you give. Did it say God? Did it say your pastors? Did it say your parents? It says you. So the measure of thought and study you give to this word, that is how much virtue you're going to get from it. Virtue, another word for virtue, is power. So if you want to get power from this word, how much thought and study are you giving to it? You know, if you need healing in your body, this is not a time to be reading revelations about the end times. <laughs> this is not a time to be reading about, you know, something else. You need to be studying these healing scriptures and getting that power working through you. If you need a miracle or breakthrough in your finances, it's not the time to be looking at healing. It's the time to be looking at how God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. It's a time to know that God is my provider. The Lord said he's my shepherd and I shall not want. And the moment you speak that, then faith is activated. Faith is working. And the moment you keep saying it, faith, it allows you to start believing what you're saying. Because, you know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And the more you say God's word, the more you will see God's word working in your life. But if you don't say it, you won't see it. But then how can you even say it if you don't take time to read it? If you don't take time to go to it and say, God, I need this. I need this from you. And this is just all the foundation. If we want to be good stewards, if we want to be a good ambassador, if we want to truly demonstrate the kingdom, this is one-on-one. This is basics. Study the word. Meditate the word. Read the word so that it comes in revelation, so that you get the rhema from it. You know, because just because 
the revelation that our pastors get, that doesn't mean that's the only revelation. Just because this person got it, that doesn't mean that's the only revelation. We serve a God that is so anointed, that is so powerful, that you can get so much revelation from John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The revelation I can get from it is different from the one Pastor Brenda can get. But that doesn't make it wrong. But I bet the revelation she got, she can go get somebody saved from it because God revealed himself to her. And again, you have to take time to read it. I mean, how many times have you allowed yourself to read something to get the revelation from it to where it speaks to you? It causes you to change. You know, Romans 12, it says that our minds have to be renewed. You know, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. That is how we change. That is how we become the people that God called us to be. And Matthew, it says, any tree that is in me that is not planted by my heavenly father be rooted up. How can we know what needs to be rooted up if we don't read his word, if we don't meditate his word, if we don't take time to see what God said I should be, what God said I should be doing? That is, it's very powerful. And it sounds simple, but it can be hard because of life. You know, working, the enemy will throw distractions. This will come up, that'll come up. The kids need this. But I want to challenge you. Don't let those distractions keep you from the power that can deliver you. Don't let those distractions stop you from getting to the one that has been there all along and just saying, I'm just waiting on you. I just want to, I just want to spend time with you. Now, the word meditation, it means to give close. And this is coming from the Webster's version and from like 1820, it says, meditation, it means to give close or continued thought or to resolve, to resolve within the mind. Now, the biblical med- version of meditation is simply just turning the word of God over in your mind, over and over again. It's the opposite of worrying, basically. So we all know in here how to worry. Who in here is worried about something? I know I have. So... When you were worried about that, you kept thinking about it, reasoning, trying to figure it out, this and that. Well, meditation is basically that just opposite because we know everything that God made, the enemy tried to pervert it. So we have meditation, the enemy has worry. You know, we have faith, he has fear. So meditation is basically taking the word of God and chewing on it, you know, if we take Psalms 119.105, God, you said your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. You said, Father God, that your word will give me direction. Your word will give me light. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for that word. I thank you for that direction. Thank you, Lord God, that when I meditate your word, you bring life unto me. You give me direction for my life, that you will not leave me nor forsake me. That is what meditation is. You take it and you just make it yours. You take ownership of it, that this is mine, that I am going to take this for me because God said I can have it. That's how you get power out of this word. You use your faith and release it when you read these words. When you read the word of God, you take it seriously. Like this is not something that I'm just going to look at every now and then, but this is something that I'm going to truly take God at his word. You know, because I'll be honest. There was a time where, you know, growing up, when I used to have seizures, and I don't know if people knew this, but, you know, like I was born with seizures. And so I would hear, God heals, God heals. But it's like I wasn't seeing healing. So I'm like, well, you say that. I mean, I see it, but I'm I'm not seeing it. And so sometimes the, the enemy can cause things to happen where you feel like the word doesn't work. You feel like it's not working for you or it's taking too long. But I want to challenge that tonight. Because if you're feeling that way, then I want to ask you, have you really been giving thought to the word? Have you really been studying the word and putting the word to work? Because any area you put the word to work in, it will do what it's supposed to do. The word is constantly working. But are you working? Are you taking the word and saying it? but then negating it with your words. 
because we know Proverbs 18, 21, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Those that love it will eat the fruit of it. But what are you speaking? Because we could say I'm healed, but then two minutes later, oh, my back hurts, or this hurts. Oh, girl, that was killing me. No, we got to cancel that. That has to stop today. You know, and I know we are all word people. We all know this, but sometimes things happen and we forget. It's easy for us to get through life, get busy, and something slip. But do you really believe the stuff that you're saying? Do you really believe what you're reading? Because the word works. Don't let any person make you think the word don't work because it does work. And if they say it doesn't work, well, then I would challenge them, well, have you been putting the word in your life? Have you really been studying it? Have you really been meditating it? Or it's just been a pass by? You know, it's like, let's say you believe in God for something and you haven't seen it happen. Oh, well, Lord, I just thank you. I know it's going to happen. I prayed once. It'll happen. But just praying once or casually thanking the Lord for it is not the same as digging in the word and putting the word before your face, laying your eyes on it and saying, this is going to happen. I know this is going to happen. I believe it. I receive it. Thank you, Lord. It's here. Thank you, Lord. It's now. Faith is now. Faith is always now. Faith is, not, faith is not in the future. Faith is not, you know, later on. Faith is always now. But if you don't see it now, are you, are you basically reading the word? Have you developed your faith where you can see things now? One of my favorite scriptures in Isaiah 55, let's start at verse 8 in the message translation. It says, I don't think the way you think. The way you work isn't the way I work. God's decree. For as a sky, for as a sky soars high above the earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. So I want to stop right there. So here God is telling us, you know, he doesn't think the way we do. You know, we're thinking this way. He's thinking eternally. He's thinking, you know, I'm doing stuff. You know, I'm trying to get you over here because I'm trying to get you in what I have for you. But you're just looking at this little brick right here. And God is saying, if you would just expand, you know, because Isaiah is talking here and God is talking to him. But if you would just expand and allow your mind to go with me, then you can think the way that I think. You can do things the way I do because we're in sync. We're in harmony. But the only way you know God is by being in his word, by really studying his word and seeing who he is. Because it's like the person that says they don't, know how, they don't know how to hear God's voice. Well, the first thing to hear God's voice is to know his word. Because how can you know somebody if you don't ever take time to see him, see his personality, to see his character, to see his humor? Because it's humor in the word. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, I can show you some stories. It's humor in the word. But how, if you don't know the voice of God for yourself, meaning the word of God, if you don't know what God's word says, then it's easy for the enemy to come in and manipulate it and turn it to where it sounds like God, but it's not God. And it's because you don't know. And then the next part of this, it says, just as the rain and snow descend from the skies and don't go back until they've watered the earth, doing their work of making things grow and blossom, producing seed for the farmers and food for the hungry, so will the words that come out of my mouth not come back empty-handed. They'll do the work I sent them to do. They'll complete the assignment I gave them. So it says right here that when you speak something, the word is constantly working. It should go and perform the work that you told us to do. If you say pain, go in Jesus' name, that pain has to obey you. You know, if you say in the name of Jesus, car, you're going to start. The car has to obey you. You know, when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, he demonstrated to us how we have the authority to speak to things. He showed us how we have the authority to call things that be not as though they were. But if you don't get in this word, you won't see that. You can't act on that if you don't first get to know him. 
if you don't take time to develop your faith. And that way, when you do speak something, it happens because you have truly built a reputation with God and you've made it to the point to where when you say something, oh yes, the angels, they move. They go and do that. Or basically, are your angels just sitting there like, oh, well, she said that last week. So, you know, we'll see. She gonna, she, she's going to negate it in the next three minutes. So, y'all, we could just rest. I mean, do they do that? Or are they just sitting there bored because you don't use them? Because they hearken at the voice of the word of God. But if you're not speaking the word of God, they have nothing to hearken to. God says he chastens his word to perform it. God wants to perform his word. He loves when his children trust him to the point to where he's like, yes, I can do that. You know, they believe with me nothing is impossible. I'm going to do that. And he's chasing after it. He's hasting. He wants to do that. But if you don't put the word in you, if you don't meditate it, then how can you get that type of power to make the impossible possible? How can you get that type of power to where you can have a house sold to you in one day? Or you can have the type of power to where, you know, when you say money cometh, somebody's knocking on your door and bringing you money. But all that sounds good, but are you willing to do what it takes to get that? Are you willing to spend the time, not just reading this word, but meditating it, spending time in prayer to the point to where you really, you know, know the word. You and Jesus are one, you know, because Jesus was the word made flesh, and we're supposed to be imitating him. So I want to challenge you. Are you like Jesus? Are you walking and talking the word? Are you a walking supply house, or are you a walking needy house? I mean, let's think about it. Because that's what he called us to be. He called us to be imitators of him. You know, one of the things I love is, you know, when I read the stories of Azusa Street or John G. Lake, Kenneth Hagin, these men, they walked with such authority, with such power, but they're no different than us. They're no different than me and you. The only difference is their dedication. You know, Lester Summerall, I love the story when God called him to go to the Philippines and they had a woman there. And the woman, it was a teenage girl in jail and she was demon possessed. And they went on the radio and they said, if anybody can help us, help us. And Lester Summerall hadn't been there for a long time, but God told him to go. And of course he was like, God, why, why can't you send somebody else? But there was nobody else because he was the only person that could speak to that demon. He's the only person that had the power flowing through him that could handle that authority. But how did he get there? It started here with the word. You know, and that power that he walked in, him, Kenneth Hagen, John G. Lake, you know, Daddy Seymour, all these men and women, Catherine Kuhlman, you know, Amy Simple McPherson, these women all and men took the time to get to know the word, get the time to get to know Jesus. They had an intimacy with him that other people, they don't want to pay that price. You know, Catherine Kuhlman said, I can't do the things that other women do. I just can't. But look at the level of anointing she walked in. When she would stay in a hotel, y'all, when this woman would stay in a hotel, people around her got healed. I mean, they're no different from us. They put their, they put their pants on the same way we do. But what's stopping us from walking in that same level of anointing? What's stopping us from being like Peter, where when we walk past people, the shadow heals them? I mean, are we willing to go to the power of the word? Are we willing to go to that and get to know Jesus for ourselves and meditate the word? Because now we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that power, and it dwells in each and every one of us. But again, you got to get to know Holy Spirit to get to know that power. I want y'all to turn to 1 Thessalonians 2.13. And if you don't know, it's the book right after Colossians, just to help people out. And 
Vanessa, can we see this in the Amplified Classic? 1 Thessalonians 2.13. And it says, we also especially thank God continually for this, that when you received the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is effectually at work in you who believe, exercising its superhuman power in those who adhere to and trust in and rely on it. Again, Let's read that again. Let's read that again. <laughs> it says, and we also especially thank God continually for this, that when you received the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is effectually at work in you who believe, exercising its superhuman power, and those who adhere to and trust in and rely on it. Y'all, this is powerful. It's saying the word is constantly at work in us. We always say we want to see the supernatural. Oh, I want to see the supernatural. I want to do this. But it starts by reading the word. It starts by reading the word and believing it. It says there, you read it, you trust it, and you believed it. That means that you have to take time to dig into this and actually believe what you read. I mean, that's another question. How many of us read the Bible, but we really believe what it says? I mean, do we really believe that we can have complete debt cancellation and, oh, man, nothing but to love them? Or is it so far out there that you just, you know, it's an afterthought? You know, oh, that would be nice one day but we don't take time to read the word and seek God for wisdom to see how to make that happen. Because God don't have money in heaven. It's going to come from here, the earth. But if you're not in a position to get that, you won't get it. If you don't listen to Holy Spirit, when Holy Spirit's telling you something, if he's telling you to give this, but instead, no, Lord, I want to go buy them new shoes. I ain't trying to do that. But that could be your breakthrough. That could be the gift, the seed that you sow, to unlock and break the debt off your back. But are you willing to do that? Are you willing to go that extra mile to see power like that bestowed in your life? Or are you just saying, you know what, I don't have time. It's just, you know, it's just an afterthought. I just want y'all to see that as we feed on the word, it shows us the answer to situation. The more you read the word, the more boldness comes. The more you walk in your authority, the more you find out who God created you to be. You know, pastors have been preaching on being an ambassador and how we are a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. The moment we said yes to Jesus, we got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit living in us. And then when we got baptized and we got the gift of the Holy Spirit, we got power. So we have power constantly flowing through us, but are we using it? Or are we, you know, need our batteries changed? Do you need another infilling? Or, you know, do you just, oh, that's nice, yeah. Because this is another subject, I'm, I'm not, okay. He said, don't go there, all right, okay. <laughs> but power is available through his word. That is something that we've overlooked and we've looked at it you know, like it's a book, but tonight I wanted to challenge you to not think of this as just an afterthought, but look at this as this is Jesus when he walked the earth. That same power that Jesus had, I can have that if I just read my word. You know, that same power that healed the one with the issue of blood. You know, when she went, she said to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. She was trying to touch the word. She was trying to touch power. She was trying to get to the point, and I believe her faith cleared the way. It moved everybody out of there so she could just get the fringe. One of the versions, I think it's the CEV, it says the fringe of his garment, and she was made whole. We have access to that right now if we just dig in our word. So I want to pray with y'all, those that, you know, 
like myself or anybody else that you know you have not been diligent to read this word, to give it, to give it the price in your life that you know you should, to give it the importance, because this word is powerful. This word is always working, you know, but are we willing to put the word to work in our own lives? So, Father God, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for your people. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that as we are here, I thank you for a new hunger being birthed in them that after today, they will look at this word differently. They will look at this word as rhema and life. I thank you, Lord, that each person in here that is under the sound of my voice, I thank you, Lord, that the anointing touched them in a way to where they are hungry for your word, that they seek this word as power and how to get power. And I just thank you, Lord God, that they are protected and that they see you as the one true God and that they see the glory and honor and the power that is in this book. In Jesus' name, amen. So, so I want, the Lord just told me to ask, is there anybody here that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? If there is anybody. I know we're all family. And then so now I want to ask, is there anybody in here that feels like they need to recommit their life? That, you know, you have not been living the life the way you know you should. And if there's anybody in here that needs to do that, then come forward. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Okay. Well. That is all I have. And so, you want me to close it out? Okay. And so, Facebook, YouTube, thank you for joining us tonight. It has been a blessed night. And remember, Jesus is Lord and heaven is now. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us today. If you'd like to partner with us, please visit our website at lovewalkcc.org. Or you can reach us by mail at 13319 Wallaceville Road, Houston, Texas, 77049. Remember, continue to walk in the extravagant love of Christ.